Okay guys, Coach Corsi here, California Philippines Bearcats. Hope you guys are doing great. Hey, it's a very neat Kyle here. It's very hot. So you might see me sweating during this video. But I wanted to talk to you about, this is the 24th vlog with uh, John Wooden and his book, Personal Best. And today I want to go over what they call the game of the century. It was on January 20th, 1968, UCLA versus Houston. Where was it played? Houston Astrodome, the largest crowd up to that point ever to watch a basketball game, pro or college, 55,000 people. It was so large that John Wooden told his players before the game, make sure you use the restroom before the game because there's no way you're gonna be able to use it the rest of the game, it's too far away. So, UCLA, why was this the game of the century? UCLA defending national championships. 47 straight wins, the record was 60. Number one rated team in the country, playing Houston. Number two rated, undefeated, and playing with the two best players of the country on one side and the other, Louis Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, against Elvin Hayes, the Big E. Many thought that this game really shaped the game of basketball, modern basketball as we know it today. Really brought basketball into a new realm. It was the first time that a basketball game was televised live, prime time, in the history of basketball. John Wooden, though, for some reason, didn't think it was, he thought it was really overrated. Middle of the season game, two matchups, regular game, not a league game. He didn't understand all the hype. But I do think he realized that this was a really special moment. A lot of people didn't know that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had suffered an eye injury two weeks before. He had double vertical vision. And basically, he had sat out the last two games they played. And he really wasn't supposed to play this game. But he really wanted to play because he knew the significance and how big this game was. And he wanted to play against Alvin Hayes. But a lot of people, me included, never knew that he had an eye injury going into this game. Because of that, he had his lowest point total of his entire career. He only scored 15 points. On the other side, the Big E had a big game. 39 points, 15 rebounds, and blocked three of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's shots, which really had never been done before. So at the end of the game, even with all that, tie game, Big E, Elvin Hayes at the line, two shots, he sinks them, and they win 71-69 and defeat UCLA and destroy their winning record of 47 straight games. So the next day at Sports Illustrated, front page picture of Elvin Hayes, champion. And in the article, and in his interview after the game, he said, ah, I didn't think Kareem was all that great. Kareem wasn't really all that great. And now you know who's the greatest basketball player in the country. So after the loss to Houston, did Kareem Abdul-Jabbar tell everybody about his eye injury? Did he make excuses? No, he never made an excuse. Didn't even talk about it. He just accepted it. But what he did do is he took that Sports Illustrated front cover and he put it in his locker. And he put it in his locker the rest of the season to look at that every day to move forward. So fast forward two months later, UCLA and Houston in the NC2A semifinals. They play again. Now John Wood knows this game's important. Abdul Jabbar's eye completely healed. What was the outcome? Blowout. UCLA 101, Houston 69. Elvin Hayes held to 10 points. Wow. Sweet revenge. He didn't gloat. He didn't. Look, pump his chest. Look at me, man. I'm really the best player. Didn't say a word. He was respectful. 
a character who's a champion, who's a true champion. That's how champions act. They don't gloat or talk about how they're better than somebody else or talk about how they're the king. They let the record and they let their success be for itself. And you know what? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, on and on, off the basketball court for basketball, was a class act, no doubt. The next night, they played in the finals of the NC2A tournament, and they beat North Carolina 78-55 to capture their second national championship. A year later, they played Purdue, John Wooden's alma mater, in the final, and they beat Purdue 92-72 for their third, their third national championship, three in a row. And it really was a culmination of an amazing career of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Louis Alcindor. Really a culmination of what everybody thought might happen if Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came to UCLA. And it did, it came to fruition. So I think the last thing we gotta remember is back then, Freshmen couldn't play varsity. I know it's weird, but it was the NC2A rule. Freshmen had to play JV. They could not play varsity at any school. So just imagine if Kareem Abdul-Jabbar could have played in a freshman. Would he have won four national championships? I would say so. Yes, he would have won four national championships. My next video, vlog number 25, on my personal best, with John Wooden, we're gonna talk about a really interesting fact that when he was a freshman, they actually had an exhibition game against the varsity national championship team. And it's really interesting what happened in that game. And we're gonna talk about that in the next vlog. So, great story, game of the century, really changed basketball how it was. Elvin Hayes, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, John Wooden, and a cast of characters. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I love learning about all the ins and outs and all the things of John Wooden and his teams and how he became successful. It's just great lessons that we can learn. I followed a lot of his, his, his different patterns, the way he coached his players, what he focused on, what he didn't focus on. And it's really brought a lot of success in my basketball coaching career as well. So it's great things to listen to, take heed, and hopefully apply it to your coaching. So I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. And I hope you have a wonderful day in Jesus Christ. Go Bearcats! Hey guys, Coach Corsi here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and thanks for being a part of this vision for the future to impact our youth and the next generation. God bless you and go Bearcats.